Today I was supposed to be getting a delivery to update my Carbide 3D Shapeoko CNC machine, but because of the storms it's got delayed, it won't be here till Monday. Uh, doesn't stop me working out where it's going to go though, so it's a lot bigger. I've got an 8x4 sheet here and it's kind of, if I align this, you can kind of get a sense of that's like the floor space it's going to take up. So the plan is it's going to slot in between here and I'll just move these machines elsewhere. And then underneath it, the idea is to put my Laguna Systems Crossfire Plasma Cutter when that arrives. So I've got the dimensions from both companies and now I'm working out how on earth I'm going to make something that can roll in and out and still be sturdy and leveled. Been doing a lot of thinking and measuring and thinking. So this is the, the theory so far. So this is what I'm trying to make. I'd like to do it in MDF just because I have it on hand, but my calculations at the moment are telling me I might have to do it in aluminium or steel. Um, steel because I know how to weld it, aluminium because it would be the right choice. So these are the sizes. So I've got the crossfire 43 by 45 and it's 40 inches high with all the bits. And then the, uh, I have no idea how you say that, Shapoko I think everyone says online, which is 45 by 41. So the hole it's going in has got a little recess where the foundations are. Um, so it's 40 inches high, 43 out, and then this little indentation is 5 inches. I've got rid of it with my whiskey glass. And then on the top, I'm sandwiching in between the two shelves. So I need the wheels on the inside at the back, but on the outside at the front. And that way the plasma cutter CNC can slide inside. That's the theory. So they end up being stacked and I can just pull out the one that I need. So I've put together one side panel. You can see here you've got the mortise and the tenon. I just cut those on the saw there, going back and forwards to make the mortise and the tenon. You can kind of see the, the grooves inside where the blades cut it. And then there's one pushed together, which is a, a nice tight fit. So I think the theory is going to work. I've cut the lengths for the frame so I've got three sides here you can see one two three I've got the the top ones the one I did my test joints on so now I need to cut the mortise and tenants no the mortise and tenants getting the right way around in all of the pieces but before I do that I'm just gonna essentially cut the halfway one here just make sure everything's gonna work out and then I'll just do them all in in one go so start cutting the tenants so I've already done this one. You can see the blade there, an inch away, and then so it's actually an inch minus the width of the blade, which is an eighth in this case. And then what I'm going to do is essentially just move the saw, uh, sorry, move the wood backs and forwards over the saw blade, kind of taking off a, a little slice each time uh, until I get to the end. And then I've got my one inch tenant. So I've set up another camera. I'm going <coughs> to try and show you how it works. Okay, so this is uh, the theory. I'm going to go over the blade several times until I get my tenant. So I'm going to start on the outside, just do a couple of passes to make sure it's clean and then go to the inch and do that one. <coughs> so when you cut an MDF you always want to have a face mask on, but for giving you the information I couldn't, now I'm coughing. But there you go, that's the tenant done, so I've just got all the others to do. All the cross members are done, the uh, tenants are there, so now I just have to cut the mortises, so you can kind of see here, um, how the tops go together. I've not pushed them in because it is a tight fit and I don't want to kind of break it. So essentially the first time I put them together will be with glue, which is risky, but I'm fairly sure they're all the same. And then you can see the, the longer tenant there when I uh, mismeasured, but it slots together, you'll never know. 
So now I'm going to run these through. I'll try and do a little video of making the mortar so you can see that on the table saw as well. Pretty much the same as the tenant, but just in the middle of the wood. Time to, time to glue. I've got lots of parts that are kind of the same, but not. So what I'm going to do is glue up the ones I know I can to get them out of the way so I can finish the measuring for the couple of last bits. So I've cut the notches on the, the front ones and then I'm just about to make a cross member for the front. Uh, so there's the glue, there's the wood. This is the, the mortise, it's too big. So once I've got it together, I'll um, put something in there to hold it. Right size. So essentially there's a 40 inch gap underneath which lets me roll in the crossfire. So once the casters and things are on, it goes up another four inches. So I'm just gonna chop four inches off the bottom of all these and then mark them out for biscuits, cut the biscuits and glue it together. Now it's time to mark out for the biscuits. So essentially all you do is put the pieces together how you want them and then just draw a line over both bits and then when you grab the biscuit cutter, problem solved. So. Here's my biscuit cutter. So it's just a, a standard DeWalt one and then you have biscuits like these. And essentially what you're doing is a tool here and as you push it in, the blade comes out and cuts a slot which will take one of those biscuits the perfect size. So you run those down, fill them with glue, clamp it and then it's absolutely rock solid once it's done. So what I'm going to do now is go through and cut all the holes that I just marked. Kind of you can see the pencil marks here. So you essentially line it up with a little notch there and kind of push down and it cuts in. So I'll run around and do that now and then uh, a little test fit. Bit of biscuit gluing, so the biscuits, so this is how they work, you can kind of see one there, so you can see the slots the tool cut, and the biscuit goes in there with glue, and then glue on the other side, and then you push it together, and then what happens is the moisture from the glue, that biscuit expands and kind of fills the hole, the glue sets solid, and this is almost becomes like one piece of wood. So the theory is you glue, like put glue in with the biscuits, run glue along the edge, clamp it, Leave it for 30 minutes and it should be strong enough for me to keep constructing. So I've got the clamps, I've got the glue, I've got a wet cloth, and I've got the biscuits. Time to get to work. The nice thing about biscuits is you do get quite a lot of play to realign things. So in this particular case, I want to make sure that the top and bottom are perfectly level because they're the, the crucial parts that everything else attaches to. Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. Just finished gluing up the left side, the second one. So now I'm gonna attach a foot on the base here and this is where the caster wheel's gonna go, this one. So they're gonna kinda screw into there like that. And then I'm going to keep the theme of using biscuits. So this is at the moment just a dry fit held on with two biscuits. So I'll just glue and clamp that. And then hopefully once that's done, the other piece will be almost dry. And then I can put the other foot on that and then work out the best way to actually assemble the whole thing. This is going to be interesting. So I'm not sure how I'm going to keep it square once I've clamped it. More glue drying. So this is the uh, the final side, and then I can put the cross member in, and that should make it sturdier, so I can attach the top and put the wheels on. Uh, 
kind of happy with it. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting. And then uh, I kind of looked up these joints, and apparently they're um, dado joints or rabbit joints. You kind of essentially just cut a rabbit out and slot a piece in. It's just that they're particularly thin. But time will tell if they hold. seats together so I've just got to Alexa start a timer for 30 minutes timer. so I've just trimmed up the bits on the top while I went for the glue to dry I just need to chop these off on the band saw so you may notice that the wood was too long so I just rotate the band saw about 45 degrees now I can trim it up. Nearly complete. So the job now, I'm just gonna biscuit glue and clamp the top rails on. So there's a couple of tricky biscuits I'm gonna do here, so. first ones are essentially the same as all the others just marked along the top and when you're doing these you either want to have a bit of scrap wood behind or make sure your fingers are well clear of the cutter just in case it comes through the other side just cut the biscuits for the other side so I'm waiting for Alexa to tell me that the glue's set this one's all clamped so my theory, my hope, my plan is that once this side's on and glued, that it becomes a much sturdier structure. You can see already the it's kind of holding its own. So the like the problems I was trying to solve was the, the gap it's going in, which is in between those two shelving units there. The inside has to be 43 inches to fit the crossfire in it. Because what I'm going to do is hopefully have the crossfire kind of roll underneath and then both my CNC machines kind of sit one atop the other and I just pull out the one that I need. Um, and of course the, you can see the shelves here, they're not the full depth which is 42 inches. So which is why I stepped out here and then stepped in at the back. And that gives me the um, width I need without having to compromise on strength so I just kind of the L shape here I just reversed it and then you can see where the feet go that kind of keeps this from twisting and then once the top's on as well there's no way the legs will twist at all so the only twisting is going to be kind of these cross members this side here and those two there and that's kind of what I'm suspicious about So this is uh, kind of sad in a way because it's the, the only part of the project that requires screws but needs must. So I've done the first one, I've cut the second one and then run it through the sander and then it should be good to go. So given all the smoke coming off there, I think I need a new blade for the bandsaw. More glue and biscuits. And then after this I'm going to eat some biscuits. The finished product. There it is. Cast is on. The old, well the smaller CNC, it's the same one I'm going to be using, just bigger, that will fill that top shelf completely. And then underneath I just kind of mocked up the height of the Crossfire Plasma Cutter. That will kind of sit there on wheels as well. So it's uh, a good job I think. The only problem I've got is these casters are not the best in the world. I just kind of found them in the workshop, so I might replace those with some that are a bit sturdier. Other than that, I've just got to wait for tomorrow's delivery. Oh and work out where all this wood's gonna go.